Hey guys, and welcome to the final part of Super Monkey Ball 2. Uh, world 10 is, fittingly enough, the hardest world in the game, although this first level wouldn't make you think that, since this is like a World 2 level. Um, but, <clears throat> anyway, um, this... Uh, I like World 9's levels better, though, because World 9 kind of felt more like the levels that we've been playing, whereas World 10's levels are like this one gimmick. They're all just really long and annoying. And, like, you'll get through them, and they're difficult, but they're not difficult in the way that Monkey Ball is the most fun, where it's just like you're trying to precisely move through these interesting obstacles. Like, here, it's just, like, a lot of static stuff, and that's kind of that's kind of boring to me, so, yeah. Speaking of gimmicks, has anyone actually played Mr. Gimmick? Elaborate. It's, um, I think it's NES... It's a platformer where um, Mr. it's actually Gimmick. surprisingly physics-based. Uh, Pat the NES Punk did a, a review of it that got me into it. But it's a really hard game, too. Uh, and did very you, physics uh, intensive. Is it a platformer? or Yeah, okay. yeah it's a platformer. And your character basically summons this star that they can throw. And it bounces around. And if it hits enemies, then, then uh, it, it, it knocks them out and all of that. But... It's it's really really fun, really interesting, but also really hard, and it has the most bullshit collectathon thing going on for it that you need to com complete to get the good ending. We're, um, <laughs> yeah. We're each, each level has this one really well hidden item that that's a, a risk in itself to just go and get, and you have to get them all in order to get to the final stage. Um, it, what does it do if you don't get them all? Is it one of those things where the game's like, I think where the game just stops? You and probably says, don't get a good ending or something like that. Or, yeah, I, I think I think the game sort of ends, um, and you don't rescue the girl that you're there to rescue. Uh, the storyline is very simple: you're a toy, and uh, the other toys are jealous because you're the girl's favorite toy. So they kidnap the girl and. Oh, it's not here. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> except as a little cute. Uh, mascot platformer. Well, if it has an alternate ending, I'm fine. My big issue is when, like, the game just stops and the game's like, you must play on hard mode to continue or something like that. That's what gives me what, like, what grinds my <laughs> The gears. red ass. That's it, because there are so many games where it's just like, you made it this far, now go play it again in hard mode. And I'm just like, uh, okay, I've already gotten this far on normal mode. Why don't you just let me keep going? Instead of making me play through all this stuff again that I've already done, okay? Yeah. Why have multiple difficulty levels if you're just going to make me stop playing after four levels? Game? Yeah. Why? Ugh. The, thing uh, about, the thing about Mr. Gimmick, though, is I think it was released in Europe, but not in the United States. And uh, the Japanese Famicom version is better because, A, there's no dialogue to, to, to not be able to understand anyway. And, B, the Famicom disc system actually has some slightly better music quality. Uh, that that's a that's true in the case of a lot of games. Uh, mm -hmm. The the Japanese versions of the Castlevania games, I think, come to mind, where they had more um, sound channels. I think mm -hmm. uh, more sound channels. And uh, Mr. Gimmick is one of those games with really great music, by the way. So yeah, that is definitely it is. Uh, it yeah, it it only saw a release on the NES in Scandinavia. Scandinavia. <laughs> That's random. Having a uh, complete NES collection must be really confusing if you count, like, like what do you count as being in the collection? Is that a 1993 edition of Mr. Gimmick from Scandinavia? Come to Why think yes. of it, I'm not sure whether or not the whether or not that uh, NES would uh, be region locked against... Um... Well, the thing about... The... But there are so many workarounds against that, you know, that, that shouldn't be a problem in this day and age. Well, the mm. problem with the, the NES was is that it's not just a matter of being region locked. The Famicom carts would not fit in a U.S. NES. They're oh, shaped yeah, I was, I, was, I was talking about the Scandinavian version. Hmm. I'm not uh... sure because um, when we were at Momocon uh, this past year, uh, I bought a uh, Japanese banjo Tui, and just for shits and giggles, I did put it in, and it's region locked. Uh, but it is the same type of cart, so... It might be. I'm not sure, though. Um, it really just depends on how much effort they put into it at that point. Because uh, unlicensed NES carts are really easy uh, to make. Because there were there were a, a shit ton of unlicensed NES games that, that came out. Which is why the seal of quality actually meant something. Because it meant that it actually went through Nintendo's approval pro process and, and all that jazz. So, like, that's why 10-gen carts and whatever tend to be 
shitty games. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm just not gonna. I'm not gonna. Oh, this level. This level. Oh, yeah. God. Yeah, this level is really annoying because it's a it's a labyrinth, obviously. So there's about a million different ways that you can go. Here's the thing: they, you have to do things that don't really make sense in order to get forward. Like here, this looks like this should be a dead end, but you actually have to build up enough speed in order to get up there. And there's a lot of instances like that throughout this level, meaning that when I first got to this level, what I did was I paused the game and went into the view uh, view stage thing in the pause menu and looked at this level for probably a good solid five minutes before I uh, before I knew what I was supposed to do. So yeah. Oh wait. No, yeah, I'm supposed to go up this one. I wasn't sure if I was supposed to go up or try to get enough speed to make that jump there. So, yeah. This level's annoying, and no matter how you slice it, I'm pretty sure that you're going to be uh, cutting it really close on the timer with this one. So, yeah, have fun, kids. Or adults, if you're watching this, I suppose. Uh, I don't even know what our average viewing age is at this point. So... It could be, you could be kids. People between the age of 13 and 22. Okay, some of you are kids, I guess. Stay in school, don't do drugs. Buy delicious Dole bananas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say Doritos and Mountain Dew, but... <laughs> <laughs> no, what, <are> you stupid? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. We better be getting paid for this. <laughs> bananas are filled with potassium, or so says Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves. That's the only reason why I know bananas have potassium. In them. <laughs> to be honest, same thing. <laughs> I only ever watched Shrunk Ourselves, though, and didn't watch Shrunk the Kids until years later, because we only ever really? owned Shrunk Ourselves. It was always between Honey, I Shrunk the Kids and Honey, I Blew Up the Kid. I never, I've never seen Blew Up the Kid either. The only other sh Honey, I Blank thing I've seen is the Disney is the Disney <laughs> was that a guy with a five second memory <laughs> honey I blanked <laughs> I'm sorry oh, <laughs> you gotta man. tell me it again yeah th th those two movies honey I shrunk the kid and honey I blew up the baby there's just uh, I I have uh, I have weird mixed memories of them because I like them but at the same time I don't want to watch them again. I'm not really sure why. Well, Honey, I Blew Up the Baby has a completely different connotation. Because, like, I know in the context of the movie, blew up means made the baby huge. But just the way I think about it, Honey, I Blew Up the Baby makes it sound like he exploded the baby. And, like, there's yeah. just baby parts <laughs> all over the, the place. And that's a good way to land yourself in jail, for the record. Although... I'm not sure why he's not... I, I forget what the character's name, but uh, Rick Moranis, I'm not sure why he's not in jail by the end of the first movie. But, yeah. you know, whatever. You want to know what's really wild, though? Uh, the kid uh, that's um, most prominent in uh, in in uh, Honey, We Shrunk Ourselves is the baby, and I blew up the baby. Wait, really? Yeah. It's, it takes place that many years after? Oh, wow. I know that there's also a... Um, there's also a uh, TV show... Uh, honey, I... Which I watched a few episodes of, but I don't remember much of it. The only thing I remember of the TV show is that there was an episode with a teddy bear that had, like, a computer virus on it. And, like, the computer virus was sentient, because, like, on a computer screen, it was, like, oh, destroy Jesus. or something. These and... stairs look so awkward. Yep, you kind of have to wiggle the control stick in order to get enough momentum to, to walk up the stairs. So, yeah. You guys can get your lazy asses out of <laughs> off of your computer and go to a stepmaster. If I, I can go through this, all of this nonsense. If I had fell, I would have probably thrown my controller. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh look! All it's right. oh look! It the, <laughs> you see the revolution. This level is a reference to the Wii because the Wii's original name was the Revolution, and this level is shaped like a Wii. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Ah! <laughs> Much like the Wii, though, you just sort of fell out the bottom. I don't, think, I don't know why this game keeps telling me to play Fallout every time you die. <laughs> uh, uh, it really likes the original games, but it thinks that 3 and 4 are just watered-down casual trash. <laughs> no, it's not about casual or not casual. It's about 3 and 4 not having as many role-play options. I know, I'm, being I'm, totally I'm just I'm being totally unironic with that. Yeah, I know. I'm just I'm just I'm just joking. So I've never touched a Fallout game. So actually, I don't. I, I have a lot of games on my inevitable. I'm going to play it on Steam eventually because I got it on the Steam sale um, list. And I actually, 
I held off from Fallout because I don't care too much about Fallout. So, yeah. Like, I have some... When is the winter sale? Uh, probably... It's probably already done by the time this video is out. Because this, this is probably going is up in January. probably the most interesting of the bunch in, um... In this in, world? In this world, yeah. The, 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 the stage spells out the word invisible. And you need to remember where the, um where the 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 uh, invisible blocks are yeah but thankfully since the these the view stage option shows the stage as it is at the very beginning you can pause the game and then, and then look... immediately fall off because you misread it <laughs> <laughs> yeah well there's that too but you can kind of you can kind of uh and you can also see the word invisible in the in the background and it shows you the arrangement of the invisible platforms at that point actually um but yeah you can you can you don't have to like walk blindly you can you can see what you're doing also uh, there's not many bananas here but wherever there's a banana that's safe ground because you have to be able to pick it up so uh, keep that in mind as well although most of the time i don't recommend this is probably the most uh where you have to do like that turn on an invisible platform that's probably the most dangerous part of the stage right there so yeah after that it's pretty smooth sailing i think it's mostly mostly straight platforms by that point um yeah. says the guy about the timeout <laughs> uh, no i'm I, i'm a, i could do it i could do it <laughs> i can do it oh shit no more monkey in around <laughs> yeah so close yeah you get pitiful points if you barely make it but it's better than dying so yeah and this is the last level of the game. Uh, there are more levels in this game than the than the the 100 shown in the uh, in the story mode. If you beat arcade mode uh, without uh, without using a continue, um, you can uh, you get extra levels, and those extra levels are often levels that aren't in the uh, that aren't in the story mode at all. Uh, there's levels for beginner, medium, and expert. And I believe also in expert mode, if you can get through all the extra levels without using continue, there are new master levels as well. And I've never seen any of those because I can barely beat, I can barely beat some, many of these stages in story mode with unlimited lives. So I don't think I'm going to beat expert mode on Monkey Ball with limited lives anytime soon. But uh, look them up on like speedruns and stuff if you're ever curious because they are, they are insane. Uh... <laughs> That was yeah. Roast. That was just me being dumb. Bunch of egotistical fucks. <laughs> <laughs> Rotating <laughs> AV logo. In in Monkey Ball One, there was a level that was the Sega logo. Uh, I, yeah, I guess it's just following. Yeah, uh, I think there's also a scrap level that was the top of a GameCube as well. So. Yep. Uh, there's no dull level though. Yeah, they 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 really toned down on the dull on the dull uh, product placement in Monkey Ball Two as opposed to Monkey Ball One. Where in Monkey Ball One there were like three or four levels that had the dull logo uh, plastered on the. Just one logo away from slapping it on the monkey's ass and just staring at you the entire game. Oh yeah, that's that's why I I, I can't believe we waited until now to bring it up. I don't like picking I I because his ass is staring at you the entire time. <laughs> it's just there, always, always staring into your soul, and I don't I don't like it. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, that's why I pick Baby, because he's the only one of these guys wearing, well, Mimi wears pants, but Mimi's also a girl, and girls are gross, so. What about Gong Gong? <laughs> no, Gong Gong's not wearing pants, uh, he's just wearing a shirt, but I don't think his ass is. Look at that, he knows you're looking, he just gave you the wave. <laughs> hey there, baby. No, no, we can't have I, I we can't have I, I be, be giving us the wave, we, uh, we need Baby to be born. <laughs> Well, I think you missed all but one of those banana bunches. I like I care. <laughs> It'd still be nice to have. It's just points, really. <laughs> yeah, so... The laser's finally charged. Now all we have to do is put in the fake Chaos Emeralds. Like... Okay, how do they even do that? Like, I've never had really had curry, but is it just because it's spicy that they want to make it like that? Or what? I don't it's know. It's just about the most opposite food you can get to bananas ever. Yeah. It'd also probably give you the screaming shits if you have a bad reaction to it. Well, it would still be the same food, so it shouldn't affect your digestion ever, I suppose. You'd be surprised what placebo can do to a person. Hmm. That's true. So anyway, we're just gonna ram ourselves into it and it'll work. Although I think they're technically touching the laser at this point, so I guess now all the monkeys taste like curry forever, or something. 
Um, I don't, I don't know. Well, that's just an added layer of protection against cannibals, isn't it? <laughs> uh, unless they really like curry, so. Yeah. Um, sure. So anyway, yeah, we just blew up their space station, which will burn up in the atmosphere and, uh, probably land on, uh, on civilized, uh, uh, civilized people, destroying them forever. Nope. We're not going to care. Actually, when you okay. think about the when you think about the total landmass of uh, of the um, of the Earth, there is actually a very good chance that it would land on uninhab uninhabited ground. Yeah, but think of all the animals. The am oh, well, we live in a world of animals, so I guess they would be whatever. Who cares? He just gives up at this point. Oh yeah, now that I'm listening to it, it really does sound like it's uh, a backwards speech when Dr. Baboon talks. See, this symbolizes... He the died with a stiffy. <laughs> the the Dreamcast, Dreamcast has a spring sticking out of it. The Dreamcast he died as it lived, strapped to the back of a monkey. <laughs> we just killed two guys. Let's dance in victory. Yeah, yeah. Aye, aye, boo. Am I right? That does explain how loud the damn thing is. <laughs> yeah, so that's Super Monkey Ball 2. Um, I really like this game. It's something I go back to every once in a while. I don't always have the urge, but... Oh, it, uh, every Monkey Ball game also has a credits minigame kind of thing, so you want to get the bananas and dodge the, the letters. But, yeah, it's... I like Monkey Ball because there aren't an awful lot of games that play really like it. So it fulfills a specific kind of need that not a lot of other games do and they don't make an awful lot of games like this on consoles anymore or at the very least not like retail games like this on consoles anymore anything with an arcade styled progression is basically relegated to either download or handhelds which is somewhat of a shame because those kind of mediums aren't taken as seriously as um as a like a retail release so i hope that we can see more traditional styled monkey ball because you know Monkey Ball, Monkey Ball 3D, even though it was really easy, was still a good game. So if they were to keep to that formula and make a console Monkey Ball game like that, I would be happy. I'd buy it. It, I'd probably enjoy it. Yeah. Well, like you said, it'll probably just be a downloadable game rather than a full box release. Yeah. That I, I, I firmly believe Monkey Ball is one of those pick up and play sort of things. It's not something you get invested in for like five hours. Oh, if you want to. Uh, well, my first playthrough of this game took me five hours, I think. The record I recorded this all in one sitting, and it was like three, I think. So um, I de I got better between my two runs, which made me happy. But did you like like in your first experience with Monkey Ball? And I'm talking about back when you were like uh, in your younger days. Did you beat Monkey Ball in one sitting? I couldn't beat Monkey Ball when I was a kid, um, but <laughs> we would play for a really long time. Like we would play for like an hour or two at a time, being stuck on the same levels over and over again. Uh, we would also play a lot of the mini games too. Whenever we got bored of the main game as well, and unfortunately, I don't, I didn't take the time to pl uh, show any of the mini games because on this memory card, I didn't have enough play points to buy all of the mini games until after I had beaten story mode. But that might be something we could do multiplayer at some point. Um, not every mini game is a winner, granted, but some of them are fun. Uh, monkey. I want to mind that. Yeah. Game multiplayer monkey ball. Monkey, monkey balls. Hmm. Look up my eyes, goddamn dance. So we never did learn about that computer virus in Honey, I Shrunk the Kids TV series. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hello, Homer Simpson. I am going to kill you. <laughs> what? <laughs> Trios of Horror. Oh, okay. You see, I feel like I miss out on so much not having not watched, like, any Simpsons at all. Like, I Do you have the, F the FXX channel? Maybe. It's, it's basically the Simpsons channel at this point. Yeah, it's the Simpsons channel at this point. And do they you play... gotta catch up somewhere, you catch up there. Do they play anything else? I don't know. <laughs> I know I... they did a marathon of every episode in a row. It lasted like, I, I, it lasted like seven. Like the... Yeah, it did, it, I th I'm pretty sure it was like a social media thing for like weeks. Well, not a, like yeah. a week. Probably more, yeah. more like it, but yeah. Also, one thing that I forgot to mention throughout the entire playthrough, the music in Monkey Ball 2 is really good. So, yeah. It does sound it's, pretty catchy. It's pretty bouncy. Consider how much you're going to be bouncing around yourself. Yeah. It's appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, poor amusement vision. They got... They made Rev-Zero GX really well and then got canned. <laughs> yeah, 
after GX, they did the Monkey Ball. They did Monkey Ball one and two, GX, and then they were uh, they were basically dumped by Sega, weren't they? Pretty much. Yeah, they, they Monkey Ball too close to the sun. Oh, yeah. It's a shame though, because they were they made good games, and I think it was just Sega's downsizing after becoming third party that did them in. Maybe also GX not selling terribly well might have had something to do with it as well, but you know. So anyway, peace has been restored to Monkey Island or wherever the hell this is, or whatever. So, yay! I I guess I don't know. We can finally eat our Dole brand TM bananas. Rarg. Yeah, we defeated Doctor Bamboo. You didn't do shit. <laughs> uh. Oh, and none in, of you fuckers did anything. And in, and in an incredibly delayed reaction after the space station explodes, about five minutes after the fact, all the bananas land on the grate, uh, land on the ground because the maze's gate is open. I suppose they're completely ignoring the fact that once these bananas land, they're all going to explode in a pile of mush. <laughs> Banana shakes. Banana slammer. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. So anyway, high score time. Woo! I know how to... Yeah, so I got I got first place. So yeah, that's my total runtime. Uh, hold on a moment. If I take all of my parts together and I check the properties, um, I added out about 50 minutes of deaths uh, total. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, awesome. Game over. Yeah, what? I thought I won. No, the game... Well, you did win, but that also the game's also over. The game's over because say, you won. Just say the end. No, the game's over. You won. It's over. That's always such a mood whiplash at the end of an arcade <laughs> style game, you know, where it says game over after you win. Well, they they're not wrong.